police officers in Hong Kong fired tear gas and clashed with protesters as the anti-government protests entered its 22nd week. In scenes that have become part of the new normal in Hong Kong, the Cosway Bay shopping district was enveloped in shouts of tear gas as riot police battled with protesters who wore masks. Masks were worn in defiance of a ban on face coverings enacted last month. A water cannon truck was also deployed. Capping 21 straight weeks of anti-government demonstrations that have convulsed Hong Kong, which is an international financial hub, and helped to sink it into recession. More than 3,000 people have been detained in the protests. The civil disobedience has posed a big challenge to Beijing, which vowed to prevent foreign powers from sowing acts of separatism, subversion, infiltration and sabotage in Hong Kong. These are the latest shots that we are bringing to you from Hong Kong as the pro-democracy protesters are getting up. The riot police is already stationed there. Just in the past few weeks, we witnessed some very violent scenes coming in from these protests where rubber bullets, tear gas, water cannons have all been used. Several arrests were made. And many were left injured as well. These are the latest shots. Of course, these protests lie low during the weeks, but it's during the weekend that the pro-democracy protesters turn up in full force. on a way on climate tracker it's a health emergency that happens every year yet the government or other governments are yet to find a permanent solution air pollution in delhi and the national capital region has hit catastrophic levels but we're still talking about possible measures and belated attempts are being made to solve it here's the report at over 800 aqi you are in the world's most polluted city The national capital is a gas chamber. It's an annual nightmare. The Supreme Court of India has declared a public health emergency as Delhi and its surrounding areas remain shrouded in a toxic haze for the fourth consecutive day. Now just to give you an idea of how dire the situation is, the levels of tiny particle matter known as PM2.5 that enter deep inside a person's lungs are currently hovering between 350 to 800 micrograms per cubic meter in the city. This is a severe plus category. India's EPICS code has imposed a series of restrictions. All construction work has been halted for a week. Fireworks have been banned with little success. All outdoor school activities for children have been stopped. The Delhi government is distributing 5 million masks in schools and has ordered all schools to be shut till Tuesday. But who is to blame for this air apocalypse? And why have the central and state governments not been able to tackle this crisis year after year? Well, number one, every year in October and November, farmers in Punjab and Haryana start burning crop stubble, causing severe pollution. Two million farmers burn 23 million tons of crop residue every winter. The stubble smoke is a lethal cocktail of particulate matter, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. It's made worse by the fireworks during the festival of Diwali. The government bans and threats have not helped. Farmers are still burning stubble. The government's heavily subsidized happy cedar machines for clearing fields are sitting idle. The reason, farmers don't want to spend money on the machines and the fuel to run them. Compounding the crisis is the political blame game. Who should take ownership for this absolute health crisis? The central government blames the Delhi government, the Delhi government blames Punjab and Haryana. 
The result is a persistent crisis that is cutting a decade from the life of people in Delhi. Peer report beyond World is One.